So again, I, I just want to say a warm welcome to everyone that has joined us this morning. Um, yes, we've been hearing all morning that this is our last service for 2020. But my encouragement to everyone here this morning is even though we're not going to be meeting in person, I want to encourage you to continue to meet with Jesus. In times of prayer, go to Him, speak to Him, keep that connection that we can have with Him alive and active. Contact each other as we're going on holiday or wherever it may be, but drop someone a message. If you feel that the Holy Spirit is prompting you to drop a message or a phone call to someone, I want to encourage you, be obedient, get hold of them and just drop that word of encouragement to the guys that are online again thank you so much for joining us it's been a, a, an amazing new journey of our on, of our online ministry and it, it's really really uh, uh, been a, a breath of fresh air and we've really enjoyed it we've embraced it so this morning our message is called there's no greater love there's no greater love to lay one's life down for a friend but I love how there's a full stop and it goes into verse 14 where it says, And you are my friends when you obey my commandments. And if you think about 2020 and everything that we've been facing, that we've been experiencing, it's been tough. There's been a lot of uncertainty, a lot of confusion. There's actually been so much loss in the world today that we can get so distracted but what has been happening that we miss what God has been doing. And my encouragement and, and, and my hope this morning with this message that I'll be sharing is, first of all, that we see and understand, and maybe you look back on 2020 and you go, oh my gosh, even though I've been through so much, that God hasn't forgotten me. Because God works through people. He, he uses you and I to to answer other people's prayers people will pray and ask god for help then he puts it on our hearts believers all over the world he'll put a feeling or a thought or a desire where we are able to fulfill it and 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 help people in need so i want to also encourage you that we are born for a time like this regardless of what we've been experiencing in 2020 we have been born for a time like this where there should be a confident expectation of us going into 2021 because we know that we've been born for a time like this if you are born again believer the very ability of god his strength his love his grace who he is is inside of us and if he's inside of us we know that he's overcome the world and if he's overcome the world and the one that has overcome the world is in us we are able to walk this out because we are born for a time like this. Don't allow what is going on in our lives to determine or undermine the destiny that God has for over your life. Don't allow the faith that God has put in you, that He wants you to reach out your faith to His faith. Don't allow that to be shipwrecked this morning. Through people, through people that have responded to God, we have seen the favor of God. We have seen His goodness. We have seen the generosity of God. We've seen His love and, and His grace throughout 2020. As people have responded by obedience to what God has asked them to do for His people in this lockdown. So, you, you know, it's a mindset. It's a mindset that we've got to shift. It's not lockdown. What is God setting us up for? What is God starting to speak to us? So John 15, 13 and 14, it says, No one has greater love, nor stronger commitment, nor stronger commitment than to lay down one's life for a friend. You are my friends if you do what I've commanded. Friends, wherever you find yourself today, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're having to deal with, God has revealed his love to you through someone. God uses people. One of the most, I think I use the scripture in every single message that I preach, and I probably will going forward because it, it, it reveals the, the, the very essence of this message of laying our life down is John 3 verse 16. For it says, for God so loved the world 
that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. See, friend, God's love that He demonstrates and shows towards us is first, it's giving of. It's sacrificial. There's no stronger commitment. There's no stronger commitment that God could show you and I by sending His Son, giving His Son, and then we receive His Son. And friends, this is the most amazing. That's why I said we were born for a time like this. Not, let, let us not... Of course, God is compassionate and He's full of grace and love and, 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 and He cares about you. He cares where you are. He cares what go, you're going through. But we don't want to lose this. That the very essence of God and the very thing that God has done for us, He is calling us to imitate it. He's calling us to imitate this love towards others by us laying our lives down for each other. It will cost you something. But the amazing beauty in it, it is not a burden. It is not a burden. A quote from Brian Houston, he's a, a pastor in America, and, and I just love this quote, and I often read it. It just continuously reminds me. I have it on my phone. I'll go to it as many times as I can because it's, it's, it just stirs me. It says, The body of Christ, the church, where the teaching of the word challenges, convicts, inspires, and encourages. Okay, but this is what it does. But futures are built and lives are changed. See, friends, in the body of Christ, we come together. God uses man to see lives built, lives changed. And he wants to use you and I to impact others around us. But you might say, but Ryan, you don't know what I'm going through. God knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you're going through. But when we start to do his business, he takes care of our business. I have seen this continuously in my own life, my short life as a believer. God is breathtakingly true to his word and who he is. We must be of his business. Romans 12 verse 9 and 13 says, Love is to be sincere and active. Love is always active, friends. Hate what is evil. Hold on tightly to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly affection within the body of Christ. Give preference to one another in honor. Never lagging behind in diligence, a glow in the spirit, enthusiastically serving the Lord, continuously rejoicing in hope because of our confidence in Jesus. Is your confidence in Jesus or are you shifted away by what you're going through? Regardless of what river you might be going or what boat, there's a confidence that we can still hold on to Jesus. We can trust him. Remain. I added that word in myself. Remain steadfast and patient in distress. Devoted to prayer. Con continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and strength. Pursuing hospitality. Contributing to the needs of God's people. See, friends, there's no greater love or stronger commitment that we can show to those around us as we lay our life down for them, as we imitate who Jesus is. So the big question is, why should we do it? If you think, you know, we've got enough of going on in our own lives, we, we, we have all these different things that are taking place, so why should we do this? Jesus says in John 14, Whoever believes in me will do the work that I've been doing, and even a greater work. Isn't that amazing? That this is the words of Jesus over us. What, point number one, what Jesus did for us. Well, I want to just talk a bit about me. Jesus saved me from myself. I remember when I was in school, I had no problem at all. I was actually quite proud to get a big fat zero when I was asked to stand up and do an oral. I just couldn't handle the feeling of standing up in front of people, them looking at me. I would choke up. I would start to stutter. I've never ever stuttered in my life, but as soon as I stood up and started to speak or do an oral, I would stutter. People, I, I would just like completely freeze and like, oh my gosh, all these people are looking at me. That is where I used to come from. I went through anxiety, depression. My relationships before I came to Christ were terrible. 
I did things that I shouldn't be doing and I expected different things. I was full of anxiety, stress. By the end of the day, I would have taken maybe, I don't want to exaggerate, or over, but like maybe 20 tablets for my anxiety and depression. This went on for years and years. I had such a good, close relationship with my doctor that when I phoned the medical center, they would put me straight through to his office. But then one day, I met Jesus in a doctor's room. And my life started to change. But it wasn't changed just so that I could go back and have an easy ride. No. God started to put people in my life. God started to change things about me. Addictions that I carried. Things that I, mindsets that I carried used to change. Why, friends? To serve God. To help God's people. From not being able to do an oral in school, I can stand now in front of people and preach God's word. There were times in my life where I was one of the most unpopular people because people would have funerals and I wouldn't go because I just couldn't do it. Today, I have done a number of funerals. I've stood up and preached at funerals. God changes our life when we make ourselves available, when we're hungry for Him, when we are ready to serve Him. That is just part of it. Just Matthew 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be saved or served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Friends, this is what Jesus did for me. This is what he's done for you. This is what Jesus does. He gives his life for God's children so that we can come back into his family. Through his life, the lost, the broken, the lonely are put back into the family of believers. We all know the scripture of Psalms where it says, we are taken out and put into a spacious place. You are taken out of the world, out of your situation and circumstances. You're taken out of being outside of Christ and put into that spacious place. That spacious place is His kingdom. It's His kingdom. There's no greater love nor stronger commitment than what Jesus has done for us. And, and no one is disqualified from it. It is for every single person. The people that are sitting here, the people that should be here that aren't here, the people that will be here in 2021 and 2022, that make themselves available to God. Jesus, is, Jesus has done it for every single person. See, friends, that's the love of God. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are His workmanship. His own masterwork, a work of art. Regardless of the mindset that you might carry today, in the eyes of God, in His sight, you are a masterpiece. Amen. You are a masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus. That word created is to bring something into existence. So you might think, what am I put on this earth to do? But I'm telling you, when you gave your life, you were created in Christ Jesus. God brought you back into existence from being out you are now in that spacious place his kingdom his family that is what God Jesus does for us we reborn from above spiritually transformed renewed ready to be used see when I gave my life to Jesus one day I didn't know I'd be standing up here I was so consumed on the fact that I couldn't even do an oral. I was so happy to get zero. But now I stand here ready to be used by God to preach His Word. What is God asking you to do? Let us be obedient. It's going to be stretching, really stretching, but the reward is worth it. Not only for you, but for the people that are around us. Our life isn't our own. God wants to use your life to impact Hundreds and hundreds of people. Ready to be used in the body of Christ. For good works which God prepared for us so that we would walk in them. I feel there's people here today that maybe have tried to do things in their life and through kicking out or not being able to achieve the things that you wanted to achieve, you carry almost a disappointment where like I failed one too many times. How can I possibly step into this calling that God has for me? See, God is gracious. He's full of love. He's full of mercy for you that He has prepared your way. He's just asking you to partner with Him. God's Word does not return void. 
You have a plan and a purpose for your life. You have a destiny. You've been created, brought into existence for God to do a good work in you. That good work is in the body of Christ, to see His people come out into freedom, into that spacious place, brought into His kingdom for His glory, for us to reveal the Father's heart of God. And as you get on His business, He's on your business. God created you. Therefore, there's a plan for your life. Your life has a purpose. You have destiny. In Christ, you are made whole. This is what Jesus has done for us. No greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay one's life down for another. Point number two, what we do for each other in the church. So I'm just going to focus in really around my life group or our life group that I'm in. And I often tell them it's not a coincidence that you're in the life group. It's not a coincidence that you are here today. It's a God incident that God has brought to you. See, God is going to place us in community, in family, but it's up to us to outwork it. I'm always blown away left absolutely in awe of the goodness and the love that the Father has for His people. Because our stories always overlap. We will sit with couples and listen about their life story in our life group. And I'm blown away by how God brings people together. This person will share this story. Last week, the same kind of story there was victory by this couple in this, in this area where these people are able to come together. See, we've got to open up. We've got to trust who God puts in our lives. Of course, we'd be wise, but we trust who God puts in our life because your story overlaps this person's story. And we're able to come together. We're able to build each other up. We're able to encourage each other. We're able to spur each other on our faith to say, this is what I did in this area and I saw saw victory. And we're able to spur, build each other up. Our stories are very similar, friends. You're not on your own. It's a lie of the enemy to, to, to believe that your situation and circumstance is unique to yourself. Whatever the, the, the enemy can do to close you up and make you believe that he's winning, God puts people around you. He's placed you in a family. He wants you to experience the, the spacious places of heaven. And he uses you and I to bring us into those spacious places because he cares about you. He loves you. It is absolutely amazing what God does. 1 Peter 5 verse 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that you may lift, that you may lift, that He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. Friends, God knows what we need. He's always going to place people in our lives so that we can walk into our destiny. But friends, we've got to understand and realize that we've got to choose to press into these relationships that God has given us. He's not going to force us. God is a gentleman. He will invite us and give us every opportunity to walk into the fullness of who He's called us to. But He uses people around us to help us. Are we on? That was... I must be honest, I almost think I almost had a lot fell down dead here. But I'm still up. I, I am good. That gave me like a, a, a really good fright, I have to be honest with you. I thought I was sweating. Now I'm really sweating. But see, see, this is the most amazing thing that I used to. Like honestly, when things don't go well, I used to get, I, I would start to like panic and but this is what Jesus does. There's a calmness, there's a peace. You can trust in Him. When things are going on, we trust in God. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around, looking, prowls around like a, lion, a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Craig shared a couple of weeks ago that Dawn shared that the devil 
doesn't want to distract us, but he wants to kill us. You know, there's one relationship that he can't do anything about. There's nothing that the devil or the world can do. And that that's our sonship. And he hates it. He can't take it because he does not stand right before God. But there are relationships that he can come and distract and kill. And that's the relationships within the body of Christ. He doesn't want to see the relationships here manifest the glory and power and love of God to a dying world. So he will come in anywhere and everywhere to try and break those up. My encouragement is stay open, stay full of grace, stay full of love with each other. Let us reveal who God is to this world. We can encourage and build each other up. We lay our lives down for each other. In verse 10, And the God of all grace, who needs grace here? This grace is freely available for us in verse 10. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory. Again, don't allow your situation, your circumstance, 2020, disappointment, to pull you off the path that you've been called on. After you have suffered a little while, you're going to suffer. We're all going to suffer. Will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. So I think I actually missed out a whole verse 9, but that's okay. Let's jump into what we do for those outside the church. All creation is eagerly waiting for the sons and daughters to be revealed. Romans 8.22 says, we know, that the whole, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in the pains of childbirth right up until the present time. The world is hurting. You know, hear what I'm saying here. I'm not naive to what is going on in the world. I know exactly what's going on in the world. But I don't spend all my time on social media reading all the news and getting, getting consumed and, and, and overwhelmed by all the fear and everything that's going on. I want to spend more time in God's Word connected to Jesus. Why? So that. Why? Because I know what's going on in the world. But what I'm still growing in and learning is who God is who I am in God. I'm still learning His Word. And the more that I get to know who I am, who God is, and how this Bible is so important to our lives, we are able to stand in the midst of any diversity that we face because we know who God is. So spend more time in God's Word and prayer. Spend more time connected to each other. The world is looking for hope where there's only despair. Hope is commonly used to mean, wish, to mean a wish. Its strength is the strength of the person's desire. Now over the Christmas messages I use, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised and His strength is in His faithfulness. The less we know about this, the less we're going to understand and, expect, and have this expectation of the promises of God, the less we are going to reveal or see his strength and his faithfulness because we're just going to get shipwrecked all the time, shipwrecked. But the stronger we are in his word, the stronger we understand who he is, the stronger we stay connected to each other, we're able to reveal the hope of who God is. Hold on to his hope, uh, his promises. Hold on to his faithfulness. Psalm 33, 20, verse 20, uh, Psalm 33, 20 to verse 22 it says, We wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For in Him our hearts rejoice, because we trust on, rely on, and are confident of. In His holy name. See, friends, when we face things in our lives, in Proverbs 18 it says, The name of the Lord is a, is a strong tower. It says, The righteous run to Him and are safe 
It doesn't stop there. They are, are on high, above evil, above conflict. See, friends, when we face things in our life, we should be running to our strong tower, the name of the Lord. We should be safe. People should look at us and say there's something different the way people in the body of Christ, believers, deal with conflict, deal with trouble, deal with sufferings. They run to it. So then when they come to us, what, what, what is different? We're then able to tell them it is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He is our strong tower. And we can run to him and we know that we will be safe. You see, friends, if we don't know the Bible and we're consumed by the world and everything that's going on, it's not just by the world but our own troubles every day, we are not going to apply, we're not going to walk out the promises, we're not going to walk out the Bible. People are going to look at us and we're going to just look like every other person. We are called to be a light. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us in proportion as we have hoped in you the more we put into our relationship the bible says draw near to me and i will draw near to you the world is looking for light in the darkness friends we are the light in the darkness life is defined as life which we see in john 1 verse 4 it says in him was life and the life was the light of men this life is a gift jesus brought a gift brought by God into the world by Jesus this light now shines in us as a light to those who are around us is your light shining bright today or are you again are you allowing the situation and circumstances trust me I've been on a journey myself so I'm preaching to myself here. I'm having to remind myself all the time that there's a light in me that God wants to use to reveal his life to people around me 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says but you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light you've been brought into his wonderful light to reveal his wonderful light to people around you to reveal the life that God has for you and I has for the people around us God wants to use you today to reveal his light his life and people that are around you stay connected to Jesus I think about a cell phone you know a fully a fully charged cell phone you have every single function available to it on that phone but as the days go by and you've used it and the battery life starts to die eventually certain functions stop working you can't use the camera you can't use the light you get this little it's quite annoying it comes up and says low battery eventually that cell phone if not put on charge dies and is useless friends we got to stay connected to Jesus you have to stay connected it's like you can't tell me what to do you were right but we have to stay connected to Jesus Matthew 5 verse 16 says in the same way let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven no no greater love nor stronger commitment to lay one's life down for another so again the question is why friends you have been called by God to shine among them like stars in the sky can I pray for you so Lord we just want to